Hi, I'm Pat Keown, a Senior Research Analyst with Thomson Reuters Lipper. I'm here to speak to you about FunFlow's activity for the week ended Wednesday, July 26. We'll start our report by taking a quick look at the week's market activity. Both the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 Index were up on the week. It was the third straight fund flows week in which they recorded gains. The Dow was up 0.3.2% and the S&P 500 appreciated 0.16%. Uh, the markets were driven by strong corporate earnings as well as uh, more good news out of the Federal Reserve. Uh, companies reporting earni earnings that benefited the indices were McDonald's, AT&T, Caterpillar, and Boeing. Uh, the good news out of the Fed this week included that uh, they would not be raising interest rates uh, at their meeting they had this week, as well as they indicated that they would be, again, looking closely at the um, inflation data as it, re as it is released, as, as, it, as they try to get it closer to their target rate before they consider more interest rate hikes, as well as they're going to take precautions in unwinding their uh, balance sheet position of $4.5 trillion uh, taken on by the quantity. Uh, caused by the quantitative easing so as to not unduly impact the U.S. economy. Okay, let's turn our attention back to the fund flows activity now. We'll start by taking a look at our equity, excuse me, our fund macro groups. Uh, starting off with equity mutual funds, they saw outflows of $6.3 billion last week. Taxable bond funds took in about $1.8 billion in net new money. Muni bond funds had net inflows of $199 million, and money market funds saw roughly $18.6 billion enter into their coffers last week. <clears throat> Let's uh, take a closer look at each macro group now. We'll start with the equity fund group, uh, starting with the mutual funds. Uh, as we said, the $1.8 billion outflow was their fifth straight weekly outflow. This also marks outflows in 17 of the last 18 weeks for the group. Uh, once again, the trend continues. Most of the outflows come from the domestic equity side. They had about $6.1 billion leave last week. Non-domestic equity also saw some outflows last week as, as well, about $257 million. Uh, for the year to date, equity funds have, overall have seen net outflows of $18.8 .8 billion. Once again, driven by domestic equity, which have, have, uh, excuse me, which have had outflows of over $40 billion, while non-domestic equity funds have taken in almost $22 billion in net new money. Let's take a closer look at our equity ETF group now. Uh, this group, uh, contrary to the mutual fund side of it, had net inflows last week. They took in $4.9 billion in net new money. Uh, the major contributors to the overall net inflows were the, were the Spider S&P 500 product, which uh, had net inflows of roughly $5.8 billion. The iShares Core S&P 500 product had positive flows of just about $1 billion. Uh, on the negative side of things, PowerShares QQQ saw $2.6 billion leave their coffers, and the iShares Russell 2000 product had net outflows of roughly $1.7 billion. Uh, let's move on now. We'll, we'll start taking a look at our taxable bond macro groups now, starting with mutual funds. Uh, they, they had net inflows last week, as previously mentioned. They took in about $1.8 billion in net new money. Uh, the major players uh, this week were the Core Plus Bond Fund Group with net inflows of $1 billion and the Multi-Sector Income Fund Group with positive flows of just about $360 million. Moving on now, we'll look at our taxable bond ETF group. Uh, another a positive week for, the, for this group as well. Uh, net inflows of $675 million last week. Uh, major players here were the iShares iBox investment grade corporate product, a net inflows of $570 million. The Van Eck J, uh, JP Morgan Emerging Market Local Currency ETF uh, had positive flows of $210 million last week. And uh, on the negative side, we see the iShares 20 plus year treasury product with net outflows of just about $1 billion. Let's move on to our Muni Bond Fund group now, take a closer look at them. Uh, as we mentioned previously, net inflows last week of roughly excuse me, $199 million. Uh, the major players here last week was the High Yield Muni Fund Peer Group and the General Muni Fund Peer Group, which had net inflows of $182 million and $67 million respectively. The last group to take a look at is our money market funds group. Big week for money market funds last week. Net inflows of $18.6 billion. This was driven mostly by the institutional U.S. government money market fund peer group. Uh, took in about $15.4 billion, while the institutional U.S. Treasury money market fund peer group contributed $4 billion to the total net inflows as well. 
Well, that wraps up this week's report. If you'd like to take a closer look at the data for yourself, please join us at our website, www.lipperusfundflows.com. And please join us here again next week where another one of our analysts will be speaking about that week's fund flows activity.